cut's coming. They're going to prevent the cut. That's Medicare spending. If I would accept that argument if they wouldn't take $522 billion out of Medicare inside of this legislation to use to pay for this new entitlement. So you, you, they just can't have that argument both ways. Question, and this thing you guys handed out today says this bill would, hits the American people with more than a half a trillion tax hikes, the largest tax increase in American history. What's the specifics on that? Well, I think uh, probably the most troubling part of that is for the first time ever, they're going to have a tax on investments, annuities, uh, to pay for health care. This is the 3.8% tax, as well as an increase in the Medicare tax of 0.9% that's going to, re- that's going to cost the American taxpayer about $200 billion. So uh, that that is a very troubling part of the trillion dollar in spending that they have to then go try to raise. And, and look, when I mentioned those two things, uh, long-term care um, and the doc fix, I didn't mention the $10 billion that CBO says they're going to have to give to the IRS to enforce this individual mandate tax to make sure that every American has qualified health coverage uh, every month of the year. Uh, And if you're without it for any one month, uh, you will pay that individual mandate tax. And confidential information is going to be shared with Health and Human Services from taxpayers. So the tentacles of the IRS are going to be all over the American people. And it's estimated by this report that the Ways and Means Committee issued yesterday the uh, Republicans on the Ways and Means Committee issued that they're going to have to hire as many as 16,000 new IRS agents in order to go after the taxes that are imposed in this bill. But you would all agree it would be the largest tax Yeah, look, specifically a $569.2 billion tax increase, that's the largest we've ever had. The answer is yes. Anybody else can ask questions? Uh, Cantor, uh, <laughs> Congressman Cantor, um, you seen, I, can you give us your kind of feeling about where this is going? Democrats are pretty confident they're going to get the votes by, by Listen, Sunday. I mean, I know a lot of you have been sort of writing stories today about the momentum uh, here on the Hill. I, I just think it is clearly false momentum. Uh, because, uh, again, this is all built uh, and premised upon uh, some assumptions that just don't bear out. And, and that now is indicative of why they're having so many difficulties in lining up the votes. Uh, the votes still aren't there. Uh, and, you know, this notion that we're going to see the text uh, in the morning uh, to incorporate yet even more changes when we make amendments to the Rules Committee reflects the fact they're having to go cut more deals. You know, where, where I start in all this is if you look at where the Senate bill began, there are some very troubling provisions in that bill, as we all know, as you all have reported on. Okay, and the, the, the dispositive act that will occur if this bill does pass is that that Senate bill goes to the White House uh, and is signed into law. The uncertainty surrounded whether a reconciliation measure is going to actually pass the Senate uh, is huge. And that, coupled with all of this confusion now, uh, has, I think, cast such a taint uh, on this attempt to reform health care that no wonder the American people are so upset. No wonder they're so confused. That all feeds into what's going on the other side of the aisle right now. So I I really don't feel there are great prospects for them as we make our way towards their imposed deadline on Sunday. Thank you all. Thank you.